my man. Oh, it was a bit of a weird handshake. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. We go that way. Ah, one more. And again, we need to get a There we go. One. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you're watching Anderson's TV. And it's my absolute pleasure to, to welcome Soren Anderson to the show today. It is absolutely my pleasure to be here. Uh, it's a world famous channel, so uh, I'm struck. <laughs> what, uh, how come you've got some time in, uh, to, to spare with us in Guildford today? What are you doing? I am in, uh, I'm in London because I am uh, currently touring with uh, Mike Tramp, the singer, songwriter from White Line Freak of Nature. Yep. He is now a solo artist and I am his uh, MD or his right hand or his producer or I'm his guitar player, kind of his brother. And we're, we're <laughs> very, very proud today because we just hit the charge with this number one vinyl charge in Denmark. We entered the one. Oh, good for you, man. Good for us, good for Mike. And is it, um, well, we're, we're, I, I, Mike's here off camera at the moment and we'll get Mike uh, on at the end of this, I think, to perhaps do a little um, laid back kind of number with Soren at the end. But I've known Soren for, I don't know. I mean, how long have you been doing the whole demo thing for, for you know, 15 years, maybe? 10 years? 10 years. I'm only, I'm only 23. 23, yeah. yeah. Well, it must have been when you were about eight that I first <laughs> met you then. Um, the thing is, I, I, some of you guys maybe know my face from TC Electronic. Yeah. I was the ambassador or call it what you want for TC yeah. for 10 years. Yeah. And then I uh, met Yamaha. Yeah. And I've been closely working with Yamaha for years. And I met you in this shop five years ago when the TSR 10 yep. came out because I did the demo tour for that. I remember. But I, I thought it was interesting because I I think there are, there's obviously, you know, lots of people will know the sort of the mega famous guitar players that make their living out Where of writing he? tunes. And, uh, but I, I'm, I'm always interested in this kind of like, there is, a, there is a good living to be made out of someone who will, you know, play in their own band, write their own music, produce other musicians, do demo work for other companies, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's. I, I think it's. There'll be a lot of guys out there that'll be thinking, how can I, you know, what could I have done maybe to to um, make a living from playing guitar in, right. the way that, in the way that you have. And I also wanted to talk about your gear Ooh. and um, you know that players that have influenced you. Mm -hmm. So let let's start mm. off with. You know, how old were you when you when you first played guitar, and who who were your, who were your big influences? It was uh, Richard Blackmore. Really? And I was eight years old, seven years old. I got, acoustic, I got an acoustic guitar and I could play Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. <laughs> Hang down your head and cry. After one week, I could play that song without stopping between the chords. So my mom and dad, they were like, okay, we might work on that. So yeah. I've been a musician since I was nine. In the first, I got my first electric when I was 12. Got the first band when I was 13. I got my first tour when I was 16. Oh, cool. Proper tour with one of the uh, Eurovision contest winners. <laughs> You're laughing, but the, the, I mean, the payroll was really amazing. For, for a kid, my dad, he was like, okay. No, I don't laugh at that because obviously my <laughs> super good friend, obviously fellow Dane for you is Pete, uh, you know, Pete Hanori, yeah. who is absolutely one of the best guitarists I know and his yes. CV has all those kinds of bands on yeah. it you know and, and you just sit there going there's it's easy to sort of mock the Eurovision or whoever it is but they don't pick bad guitar players to be in those bands I you had know. a great tour for a 16 year old kid and uh, I, I had enough money to buy a Fender Stratocaster and a Marshall what, what year was that did you actually play on the Eurovision Song Contest no I did so not so you were like one of Denmark's kind of contestants that never quite Oh, I didn't play on the on the actual show. I was right. just touring with the girl oh, who, who was the Danish winner. But it was a big tour, and and I was in the game before I knew it. And um, Eurovision is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there in YouTube land. It's like it's the one program a year where you just think I've got to watch this. Got to watch crash. it. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. That's great. <laughs> uh, so so yeah so 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 Richie Blackmer was yeah. the, the the riff. Sorry, I gotta play. I'm in a music <laughs> shop. I know, but. <laughs> There's like a massive red alert gone off in the store like beep, that. Beep. No stairway, no Don't. smoke on the water. That riff was the way, yeah. that was my, you know, way into to, to playing guitar. And uh, and what was the first electric guitar that, that your parents bought you? That was a no-name, shitty, don't know, no idea. Looked like a Strat or something? Yeah, or? Strat kind of guitar. And um, and then I just took it from there and um, worked, worked my way through the business, through that Eurovision thing and into the right managers and... And um, I, I see my business and my career as a, 
It's a small Tivoli. There's a Tivoli. roller coaster. Right, okay. There's a tent where you can shoot, and there's a, you know, there's a bit of everything. I do live shows. I produce. I do demos. Yeah. I talk to Lee. I, you know. But that that is, I think, that's that's the tip, isn't it? To for anybody that is trying to make a living as a as a working musician, is just take the work. Do, Absolutely. Do, do the work that's there. Exactly. Um, of course, if I mean Kirk Hammett, he doesn't have that problem. He has a proper yes. band, and he wrote a great riff that makes him a lot of money. But yeah, that's the top one hundredth of a percent, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Of, of one out of the, ta- thousands. Yeah. Guitar players. Um, but there's way more. Do you do much teaching, or have you always done playing and? Uh, I, I, yeah, I did a lot of teaching when I was in my 20s yeah. because that was 92 or 3, 4 and all the shredders came out there and, yeah. you know, nobody could play that shit and I tried my best and got a, a gig as a, as a teacher and I think Peter, did I have, did I have Peter as a, uh, <laughs> did you, did you go to my class, my guitar school? No, he did not. <laughs> yeah. He did not. He's Danish, now you know. <laughs> You should have just at least said yes for the guest, Peter. You're fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, well, look, is there any, you know, for people that are, you know, maybe there's people out there that have just graduated from a from a, a guitar course or something and they're a young guy and they're a talented player, but they've got no work at the moment. Is there any kind of tips and stuff that you yes, can give them? for? absolutely, know? yes. If you, if you um, let's just walk out the street here. And you can point five people that play faster guitar than I do. That that shreds the shit out of me. That really, really knows yeah. how to sweep and tap and fucking everything. Right? That's not where the money is, guys. Um, I I work as a producer. Yeah. And um, I work as a guitar player and a songwriter. So I try to produce my shows. Mm-hmm. And I know that's one thing that Mike like about my playing. That he knows that. My reverb is fine, and when when we play uh, Broken Heart, there's a chorus on the verse. He'd mm-hmm. prefer that. When we play Neil Young stuff, it's a fuss sound, right? I'm really trying to make make it sound right. Mm-hmm. So try to spend some time on your tone, yeah, on your pedals, on your gear. Don't show up with two marshals if it's a club gig. Find a combo. Yeah. Don't show up with this big pedal board if you're the rhythm guitar player. You don't you don't need it. Mike has no pedals. He's the rhythm guitar player. I'm the lead player, so I have a pedal board. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to... That's. I think that's why I... I just came back from the Glenn Hughes tour. We did yeah. six weeks with Glenn. Well, that's another... That's a Fender Stratocaster. You don't show up with with a Flying V for Glenn Hughes tour, right? Yeah. So, find the right gear. Work on your tone. Uh, spend some time on uh, writing songs and produce music and understand the, the sound picture of... Guns well, and Roses, you got Easy there, and you got Smash when you're, there, and stuff like that. When you're working for a guy, you know, and it's, whether it's Mike or Glenn, or is it? Do you very much have to just go whatever they want? That's what I'm going to do, or are you, do you? Or perhaps as the relationship develops, are you able to sort of throw in your own kind of ideas about how things should go? Or you know, and again, if when you're just starting out, do you think? it's important to develop that relationship before you start sort of saying, mm-hmm. hey, I, I think this song would be better if we did, you know, it, it, do you think you might get thrown off the tour if you <laughs> did that, you know? <laughs> I just, I just inter- again, because guys that are, you know, maybe just getting that first decent gig, you know? Um, well, artists are very different from person to person. Let's Obviously, be, Mike's wonderful. Let's and, be clear, Mike you know, is great. Yeah, he's great. Mike is a team player. Let's start with Mike. He. He kind of gives me like that free space. I can go wherever I want because now he knows me so well. We've been working together for 10 years. So he knows that I'm, I'm not going to show up with a Kramer and an ADA preamp and a, and a Mesa Boogie <laughs> Slave. He knows that I'm going to play retro rock yeah. guitar. And after the gig, he's like, that chord, sir, or that solo, I really like that. Yeah. Or he go, I think the intro is a little too much. Can you, can you find another pedal or... Yeah, take off the gain a little bit, you know, stuff like that. So that's kind of you know that's an easy going geek. Same with Glenn actually. He's very very nice and you know, hey son, that solo should be a little longer, but uh, maybe at the delay later on or something like that. So you know, these guys are legends and yes. they care about. I care about the originals, but but you know, when you play Burn, Stratocaster, when we play. Rootsy stuff with Mike, 
this guitar, you know, yeah. low output pickups. And so I try not to bring the Kramer <laughs> to the tramp gig. <laughs> and, and the spandex pants <laughs> and everything like that. <laughs> no. Well, look, so gear wise, yep. has it, has your gear evolved much since you started or have you always been into the same kind of stuff or? Yeah, I kind of still, I'm still where I started. It's weird, but, but I am. Back in the days, first time I saw a, a multi-effect was the Boss uh, mm -hmm. ME5. You remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Sounded great. Yeah. But it was made of plastic and it was a bit like dodgy, but it sounded good. And since that, there, there has been a multi-pedal on my board since. Okay. Ever since. G System or Nova System from TC or now it's the Line 6 M13, which is a pretty cheap piece of gear, but it sounds great. And what what is it that attracts you then to... so? If you guys are looking at the pedal board now and you're not familiar with what an M13 is, it's essentially, it's quite an odd piece of kit really, isn't it? Because it's not sort of multi-effects in the way, it's not like a modeling thing or anything, is it? It's not sort of designed to uh, just go straight into a PA or straight into a desk. No. It's designed to sort of take tons and tons of pedals yeah. and put them in a sort of a slightly smaller format and allow you to either just assign each button to one pedal. So, you know, hit this and your chorus goes on and hit it again and the chorus goes off. Or to do it in perhaps a more traditional multi-effects way, which is when you'd hit one button and maybe several pedals mm -hmm. would come on and, and off at the same time. Now, I, you know, what is it that drew you to that as opposed to just having a board with, you know, all the different individual pedals on it that right. you wanted? I, um, as you can see, there's a couple of standalone pedals and then the multi-pedal. Yeah. pedal. And I, I, I split my idea of guitar tones into three blocks. You got something which I call pre-effects. Mm -hmm. Then you have the drive overdrive circuit, the overdrive section, and then post effects. And a lot of, lot of people, they use the drive circuit from amps mm -hmm. and then put your post effects in the effect loop and your pre-effects on the floor. Yeah. But I need a piece of gear that I can travel with and I need a piece of gear that I can trust. And when you play South America and you ask for a Marshall, you can you know you don't know what to expect yeah so i always ask for jcm 800s and i just run totally clean into my into my amps boring clean like no yeah. saturation no distortion at all i sometimes think that you know the reason you see so much you know fender and marshall backline when bands are touring is that that is just what the higher companies have and if you're if you have a request that's any more exotic than that you, you just can't get it in you doomed. half the places. <laughs> so it's, you might as well try and have a board that sounds good into a JCM 800, because at least you know you're going to get one of those, or, or sounds good into a Fender Twin, because at least right. you know you're going to get one of those pretty much wherever you are. Exactly, um, exactly. But it's interesting, so you're not using any of the gain characteristics in the amp. Just clean. And from the M13, are you just using those kind of post effects like reverbs and delays, or are you using it, some of the pre-effects as well? No, as well? exactly, exactly. That's everything from a chorus. And this is why the M13 is great, because um, it's emulating the very first gray boss, the big yep. gray... Uh, CE1. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> Which is a bit dodgy as well, but sounds great. And my slap echo, which is a electroharmonics memory man delay, and I that really good. it's great, right? Yeah, that sounds good. It's it's emulating those classic pedals very well. Yeah. So I have 128 pedals right there. Uh, in and are you using it like you were you just you know hit one button and and that effect comes off, or do you program it up to do? more complicated things it than depends that. on the gig right. i have a i well the, the, the good thing about this if it's you, you probably know that from the gig rig or from the g system mm -hmm. or whatever you can have instant access or presets and yeah. this is my mic tramp preset yeah so i hit that oops and i open it up and now all my mic tramp effects are pre-programmed right so let's say we play um there's a song called um uh, give it all you got and i have a theme which is Tap tempo, one, two, three, four. Then we added another guitar when we recorded it. So I got that right here. Yeah. 
And then Mike starts. Sounds a bit Thin Lizzy, that doesn't it? Wow. I like it. <laughs> it's just a simple harmony. But, Sounds good. But you know, can you imagine having? I, I'm playing three tours at the moment. Yeah. How many pedals should I bring oh. to cover all those forty-five songs? Right. Yeah. So. Because it sounds so good and because it's solid. And to, it's to give Line 6 their due, I always thought the M series, you know, M5, 9, 13. Yeah, it's I always thought the reverb delays and modulation effects in there were really good. Really good. I thought the distortion effects were meh. Um, compressors. Yeah, I, did, I didn't, wasn't sure about that. I, I, I didn't really use the compressors much in them, but certainly the, the, the post effects were good. Yeah, um, absolutely great. And if you guys are on headphones, just another trick for me, that's why I'm playing stereo. P Pete, he was laughing his ass off to my, this morning when I was, hey Pete, I'm looking forward to meet Lee again and can you can you make me a stereo rig? And he was like, stereo, sorry, it's not the 80s, you clown. <laughs> and I was like, but I want to tell the guys out there about my theory. So I asked for a stereo rig because, as you can hear, my delay, oops, let me play clean. It's, it has a bit of modulation. So my delay are wide mm -hmm. and my clean tone is right there in the middle. So the delay doesn't get in the way of my... Yeah. That's why I'm playing stereo. I don't yeah. have crazy ping pong stuff and just because my effects is out yeah. there and my guitar tone is right there. Yeah, no, Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's uh, M13s, uh, you see that I, I always see that uh, in surprising places, like, you know, quite pro players, and you just go, oh, you really isn't like, in fact, even smaller than that, I, I, you see the M5 and the M9 on a few yeah. pro players' boards, and you think, I saw Pete Thorne like, was playing it, and I was like, really? Wow. Because like, M5 is like 99 bucks yeah. or something. It's just like, really? That's but on if, your board? It's a great piece of yeah. gear if you need reverb, delay, chorus, yeah. everything after your yeah. drive pedal. Yeah. So, look, um, you've got some really cool looking uh, pre pre pedals here <laughs> yeah i do um and i'm really only familiar with the cs2 i know and i have to be honest with you again why is it that on a pedal board full of you know relatively expensive and unusual kit uh why is there a 60 buck <laughs> boss cs2 on here i don't know <laughs> i do i had it i had it it's it probably my first or second pedal and I can't live without it. Um, I'm so used to it, and <laughs> what, I use it in a weird and way. You've got this dialed up, yeah. full on, haven't level, you? Level, Everything. Level full up and yeah. attack full up. That yeah. means it's attacking instant, slow actually. Oh, okay. It's the opposite. Is it's it? It's the opposite. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you hear it, now it gets flat and squeezed, right? Yeah. Bass end. I got way more bass yeah. end, and mm. I got that snappy. You just turn it on and off while you're playing that. Of course, it it, yeah, it fattens it. It, nicely, it raises the it? level. A little it's not bit. as noisy as I thought it would no, be. No, it's a good pedal. Yeah. And what it really does is, okay, let now we, we we're playing Broken Heart with the uh, with the White Lion, mm -hmm. and there's an intro where I have my chorus and reverb, and I play. Right? With the compressor, it sounds. So that 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 glues it all together. Yeah. And also another way to use it is um, I use it as a pre-booster for them for my overdrives. So It's more, it's a bit more subtle there, chunky, isn't it? But it yeah. gets a bit. You can hear that sort of fatter. So it's. Uh, I often find with compressors, they're they're quite a. If you're the guitar player and you know that when the feel is better, you'll play better. Mm -hmm. I often think the compressor kind of falls into that category. It's more about making you feel comfortable with what you're playing rather than necessarily an effect the audience is going to go, oh yeah, I can completely oh, hear yeah. the difference. Oh yeah, it's a tool. Yeah. Very much. Especially for, I mean, right here I'm on my low gain channel. Mm -hmm. 
This is my, let's call it high gain. <laughs> If I need a little bit more juice for mm -hmm. my solo. <laughs> and it, it doesn't color my tone. It doesn't change my tone. It's just giving me a little bit more juice. Um, and what are you using here for the for the drive stage Ooh. then? Is it is everything coming from the, the Lunar Stone or is some of it coming from the Centurion? No, no, no. Or? Do we have time for a, sh a short story? Yeah, of course. Okay, here we go. I, I, I grew up with the, the governor, the martial governor. That yes. was my first ride pedal. And I was just like, whoa. That Gary Moore, Angus yeah. Young kind of rock tone. I was just yeah. like. Ugh. So then I, I uh, start to use tube pedals, like the Tube Factor from Houston Kettner and mm -hmm. the Cooltron pedal from Vox. And, but they are big and, you know, they mm. on 9 volt AC and, you know, they're really big. So I've been looking for a tube sounding drive pedal, but 9 volt non tube yeah. for years. And. I went to the shop in Copenhagen called Effect Pedals mm -hmm. and tried like 50 pedals compared to my two pedals, just one by one by one by one. And I was just like, okay, there is no pedal out there with that governor kind of yeah. tone. On the way out, the owner, he said, well, Soren, you got to try this. Uh, it's a guy from Denmark who called Luna Stone. You never heard of him before, but it's good. And I tried it and right there, I was like, okay. So I found out he lives 10 minutes from my home. <laughs> so handy. I phoned him and I was like, hey buddy, I'm a guitar player, I tried your pedals. It's the best tone, best circuit I ever heard. What, what's happening? Well, it's called True Overdrive and I'm a nerd and I'm, you know, oh really? Let's do something, this is too much, this is too yeah. good. So we did a Soren Anderson signature pedal, <laughs> which is pretty cool. That was handy that you just happened to have one there. Da, 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 <laughs> you rehearsed <laughs> this, haven't you? <laughs> Which is exactly that pedal I tried just with an extra button and an extra feature here, but it's exactly what, what Luna Stone they created. And what it is, it's pretty much, it's, it can save your ass, let's be clear, everywhere you go, because you plug it into a clean amp like a Vox AC30 or a Twin or a clean channel JCM 800 and you go from this to this to this. And now time for solo. So it's like a three channel yeah. pedal. And Ooh. it's just great. Nice buttons. It's They're nice. the silent switching ones. Great, they? right? And I noticed that the, the boost function has got quite a handy pre and post switch. So you yeah. can, presumably you can use it in pre mode to almost just give you like a third stage of gain. It's like a pre boost, or, yeah. Or post if you just want a volume boost. Yeah. Does the boost work independently as well? It does, yeah. So that's a great pedal. That and, is um, cool. And you know, the functionality is something I came up with, but the actual circuit is is what, what these guys yeah. have been doing for years. Oh, I like that. Um, I know that uh, the guys at Lunar Stone were keen to sort of mention that there are just, you know, sort of regular size pedals as well. That little company is, slow, is slowly taking off now because yeah. if you don't like all these buttons and, you know, features, that circuit is now available in a single Pedal. Oh, so it's this is what the Overdrive One circuit is it from that's here, your, in here? That's actually that one. Oh, okay. So if you are a classic rock fan and you like the tone of that's a naughty sound. It's great. Uh, all right. Well, look, I'll stick some more information on about Lunar Stone on the website. Um, in the description section of this video. Yep. But tell me about uh, what is a Chicago Iron Centurion? Now, up here, we are, we're entering the psychedelic uh, <laughs> the, floor. Are these like a couple of favorites that the M13 just doesn't really do? Or doesn't... Yeah, and because I'm, I'm, I'm a, um, what's the word, Lee? I am a romantic kind of guy mm -hmm. when it comes to... An pedals. old romantic. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there's so many great, you know, modulation amps out there and it's fine, it's all good, but I'd, some of it has to be analog. Yeah. I don't know why it's... Yeah. And do you use these through the effects loop of the M13? So you're still able to assign it within the M13 or do you just use it standalone? These guys are in the effect loop. Um, really? Yes. Oh, in the effects loop of the M13? Yes, sir. Right. So because they're still going in the... So they're not going into the front of the amp? Right, well, actually in the effect loop of the M13. So the yeah, whole so rig is going into the front of the amp. 
Oh, well, even just, the reverbs and everything, everything. just going into I'm the front I'm just going amp. straight into the... Front. That's so simple. Yeah. That's my, that's my idea. Look, Pete's going, that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah, I've been doing it for years. That's what we do in Denmark. I don't know why. It's fine. But if you have a multi-channel head, you would have your preamp section in the effect loop of yeah. this guy. Yeah. But we are on clean, so we just go straight into the front. Right. But I I, I could have decided to just have these all front-ended, yeah. but, but for some reason, because there is an effect loop, I was like, yeah. okay. Well, it makes sense because then at least when you've got all the scenes programmed in for your different gigs, exactly. again, you're only pressing one button and it's turning the stuff on. That's cool. But Clever so, guy. Clever so, guy. So tell me, so what does the Centurion do? Is it just a boost or is it is it adding an octave? Was it adding an octave it's, on that I kind of heard? Or? I'm, a, I'm a, not to sound cheesy, but I'm such a Hendrix fan and everybody is. And um, he yeah. came up with this, these, him and Roger Mayer. If you guys are listening to... Um, uh, the Band of Gypsies. Oh man, I love that sound. And it's a pricey guy. It's really pricey, but it's the best Octavia. Out there. Uh, yeah, I've not, I've not. Heard, I mean, I do love. I it's, do love the octave fuzz. Oh man, it's a cha great. Chappers, the the you know the, the there's as these guys will all know, but you know Rob that I do the other the other videos with. Yeah, Rob. He's yeah, a yeah. huge, huge octave fuzz. I'm trying to think which one he's got. I think he's got the Voodoo Lab is great. The um, I think he's got the MXR one that they did. You know the Hendrix. Yeah, uh, that one is great. That's a lot of good octaves out there. But it, that does sound great. It's just and great. are you using that with another distortion pedal though to yeah, get that just sound? To 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 demonstrate how not to use it. If I, I'm running clean, it still sounds great, but yeah. if I play like a major chord, we're in trouble. Picking up all the harmonics all wrong, right. isn't it? Yeah. But pushing a, a drive pedal and play single notes or yeah. fifths. And is, is the cost vibe, is that, the again, just more Hendrix-y kind of stuff? More Hendrix, and this is actually a weird pedal. Um, I'm such a nerd, I'm sorry, no, I'm such a nerd. This, this is what we want, we like I'm, nerds. <laughs> I've been looking for vibes, um, I'm always looking for vibes, Yeah. because they're, they're, they're very different. And I, I, I came to this uh, solution that the best ones are very, very pricey. Mm. Running on AC and you know, like, oh, really? like the proper, uh, Mojo Vibe 2 is really good. But Dan Electro did a cheesy, ugly looking little weird pedal 10 years ago right. called Dano Vibe or something. Okay. It's, and it's full of bucks. When, out of, straight out of the box, it's full of bucks. It's really, really, really. It, it First of all, it boosts the level 6 dB. Um, it pops out when you kick it in. It's like. <laughs> and it's a horrible pedal. But it sounds amazing. So that is a Dano Vibe reboxed. Oh, right. So right? like a custom thing, or is that yeah, something? Yeah, it's that... a friend of mine in Copenhagen right. called Peter Kosick, and he right. he just reboxed it. Now, check it out. It yeah, let's have a listen. Unreal. Unclean. So nice. Oh, you've got two vibes in there, haven't you? you so I added, yeah. Yeah. I added a button. But in the green mode, it's doing both simultaneously, isn't it? Is that? That's just one. Nice. It sounded like it was going wah 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 wah, but well, the the pulse is what what's hard to find. Yeah. Vibes should go wah 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 wah. Oh, okay. They should do that. In my opinion, instead right. of wah lo wah lo. Yeah. And you can really hear it when you kick in a lot of of of, of distortion. You can really hear how it, it sounds really great when when you go. But even on, on a, a cleaner, oops, on a cleaner, um, sounds great. 
40 quid. I'm so defensive That's when it comes to, to Hendrix. When, when someone on a forum or literally just goes, no, I'm not, I, I think Hendrix is overrated. I just feel like, I don't, you could say that about any other living guitar player. I don't care, it doesn't bother me. Everyone's got their opinion. But anyone that says Hendrix is overrated just doesn't understand. The Beatles, Hendrix, Zeppelin, sorry. Yeah, you know, they are, just, they're just allowed I'm to sorry. be, you're not allowed an opinion. You're not allowed a negative opinion about those three bands. No, no, no. You're no, only no. allowed to say you like them. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yes. So, well, that's, that's a cool run through of the, of the rig. I noticed you've got a Mission pedal. Yeah. Um, and there's really, that's, the guy from Mission pestered me for like a <laughs> year you. to stock his pedals. And I'm looking at these things going, it's a $200 volume pedal. Yeah. Who spends $200? And then, and then in the end, I got, you know, he phoned me so many times, said, fine, I'll buy some pedals, like, right. leave me alone. And they've become like our best selling. It's almost like everybody just goes, yep, they, they, there must be something about them that's just so much better than any other volume pedal out there that everybody buys them. So do you want to hear why I use I do want to hear why. And why do I not use a Dunlop or Crybaby yep. or Vox? Vox and Dunlop are great. Yeah. I love them. They sound great and it works. Um, that guy is the most... Uh, is it called Versatile mm -hmm. War Pedal I ever tried? Uh, there's four dip switches inside, so everybody knows when you play with a lot of gain, um, it changes the way the, the wall cuts through the mix, cuts mm -hmm. through the whole circuit of, of noise. Um, if you play EMG, a wall pedal starts to you know change a lot, so you can customize oh, okay. that impedance or whatever it is yeah. to, to work with your gear. Um, but the best way for me to, to, to show you how, how why, why I like it so much is, of course, it sounds great. So, sorry, are you, you're using the wire effect in the M16 and just using the mission pedal to do it, or is that a mission wire pedal? That's a mission wire. That's sorry. absolutely a mission wire. And here's a trick for you guys who, I mean, check it out. I'm going to... Gonna... Actually, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't even know if we stock the Mission Wire pedal. We stock all the volume and expression pedals. The wires are great. So it's I, amazing. I need to. Oh damn it! Another Let me switch on a lot of noise here. Okay, this is channel one. <laughs> yeah. Right, channel two. <laughs> now we have a lot of gain on my guitar. Yeah. Like. Now I'm gonna switch on the wah. Yeah. That's not a lot of noise. For I mean, for a while, for is what, it? normally you can hear a boat coming into <laughs> to a harbor, like <laughs> a lot of wawas. The criticism as well is that you, well, particularly the dump, the uh, crybaby, is you lose the you, you lose some uh, gain, don't you? As soon if you've got the wire going into a driven amplifier mm -hmm. and you switch the thing off, you, you notice quite a big uh, gain difference between when it's on and when it's off. Yeah, and I guess obviously you're yeah. happy with that one that you don't get that. That's that's um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, the trick, just because I think it's a great trick. My supply, power supply is right over here and my wire pedal is as far away. Oh, do you find there's a lot of interference between that's, wire that's and power supply? That's the ferry coming into the harbor. If you put your wire pedal next to your oh. power supply. Good tip. Yep. What's the power supply out of interest? Keox. Oh yeah, another Danish brand. You Danes, honestly, you just, it's like such a closed <laughs> shop over there. On my, on my pedal, like, I got three is. pedal boards and they're all powered by Keox. Yeah. Because it's just great. Um, Fair enough. Isolated outputs and, you know where it's it's all about the european union unless you're danish or british and just then, here, then all we want to do is just look after ourselves just here <laughs> how it cuts through a lot of drives that's just why the mission wire is great if you go that's cool what about that that, that was great. four boosters well Look, so last <laughs> last things now, uh, guitar-wise, I can't remember, did you get involved with Yamaha as just kind of like to do the amp demos and then you fell in love with the guitar or had you fallen in love with the guitar and then they asked you to do the amp demos or what, what was that? I fell in love with the guitars, um, the SG2000 way back. Of course, I used that. When I first saw you doing all the TC demos at all the big trade fairs, it was always an SG2000. Yeah, of great course. guitars, love yes. it. It's the, the Les Paul killer, it's great, I love it. Um, so I st <laughs> nothing kills this. I know. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it start. We started to have a close relationship. I started to have a close relationship with Yamaha. Yeah, through the SG two thousand and uh, been playing the Pacificas and you know more more for studio stuff. Um, yeah. 
but then a couple of years ago they put it out the Re the Rev Stars. Yeah. And that's a great piece of gear. Yeah. So we are working on a Soren Anderson signature model as we speak. Oh. Um, which is pretty much just a, a 620 out of the box, but yeah. we changed everything. Like tuners <laughs> and pickups and... I love this bridge. It's great, man. We changed that, we changed the electronics, yeah. we changed the pickups. These are Dimasios. Oh, okay. PAF, mm -hmm. uh, 36 anniversaries. Yeah. Which is a very classic sounding... Oops. I'm out of tune, bro. It's okay. We, we got a tune. That's just a great pickup, which is... Uh, Important pickups are very important. Pickups are important. Although, do you know what? Someone was talking to me. I get asked tons and tons on Facebook, um, what are your favorite aftermarket pickups and all this kind of stuff. And I'm kind of like, do you know what? I've almost never changed the pickups in my guitar mm -hmm. purely and simply because when I buy a guitar, mm -hmm. if it if it doesn't inspire me when I first try it, I generally don't buy it. And then of course, once I do have it, I'm, I'm too frightened to sort of change anything in case when I put it back how it was, it doesn't sound as good as I thought it did on the day. So I'm, I'm a real kind of like, I'm the wrong person to ask about what pickups sound great on a different guitar. Right. Because I just, I'm just, I'm t generally not, the only guitar I've got is my, actually no, I've got two strats that I've done it to, and I would concede that both times I've done it, it sounded better than it did before, but I'm a nervous pickup installer. So, but do you, do you go through, do you get sent like tons of pickups to try? No, and... no. I am, um, well, I, I have a small, you know, endorsey thing with Dimasio because mm -hmm. it's, it's the classic great company and they were, they were next to TC Electronic at NAM. Right. And they just walk up to me and like, if you, if you want a couple of pickups, we, we will help you out. And I was yeah. like, wow, Dimasio, that's where Gilbert and Satriani and all the other guys are. I want to be there. Wow. <laughs> I'm, yeah, Demarcio, <laughs> Seymour Duncan, and Bare Knuckle. Those three, I think, they're yeah. my three favorite. Well, actually, you know, Lola. Lola. I was just thinking Lola. that great mind. Lola. Like, he's not Danish as well, is he? I'm pretty sure he's, he's American. Not. Tramp is on Lola pickups. He he uh, he has a ref star as well with a Lola. <laughs> right. Sounded good. They are great. Sounded pickups. great. Um, yeah, I, I I agree. But I do agree. Um, to give you a I, an idea of how much your pickup can sound, can change your tone, just to give you an idea. I got two ref stars here, which is the same wood. It's the same guitar. Yeah. That one has a Bixby, but basically it's the same guitar. Let's try with a bit of drive. I love that chord change. Yeah, thank you so much. Lee, same guitar, but different pickups. Now, it's smooth sounding. It's a bit more though, smooth. Though. It's we, we're close to, to a single coil here. It's really, right. really low and bright, which yeah. is great for. I play 75% of the, of the Tramp show on this guitar because it's okay. so retro and it's so yeah. Tom Petty, Ryan Adams, Ryan Adams, both the Adams, you know, that classic. That's a great sound. That's a great sound. Thank you, Lee. Oh, well, look. You know, Remember, 90% of, of, of the life of a guitar player is playing rhythm. <laughs> well, what, what, do you, what do you say? It's, um, oh, come on, Pete. What's your, what's your something for show and something for dough, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's up here for show and down here for dough, isn't it? Do you use, do I you just, use, I do you use the word dough in, do dough. you know what I mean? Yes, I do, money, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, when, we, when I play with Mike, let's, again, let's do the, uh, the, um, Give it all you got. The verses. So I need tone. I need yeah. strings. I need pick. Yeah. I don't. I, need lo I love that about you know. I think when you really get into the guitar. 
you do realize that you know everything that the, you know i changed the strings on that les paul the other day and i went i went the heaviest i've ever been you know 11 to 54s or something on that guitar it's tough to play now it's never sounded better though it sounds it's, it's added an extra degree of sort of fatness to it you know plectrums um just the, stylistically how you dig in and how you don't dig in i think there's so many things and then obviously all the obvious stuff like you know what pickups are it and what tremolo system and what guitar is it and what scale length is it and it, it's just Everything goes in, and I think um, having that mindset that you've obviously got of just really, really wanting to going on that tonal journey, tonal safari. Yeah. You know where it's like, come on, I've got to find it. I've got to find it. It's so important. You know, it's yeah, like when you've got the so. right tone. I agree. The playing, I think, come it flows more easily. You know, if you're fighting against bad tone, you're never going to have a great gig. No. Um, so, well, look. Why don't you let's get let's get a microphone set up for Mike. We well, saw yeah Mike is here so why not? And uh, again if you're interested in uh, anything Mike is doing or Soren is doing and you know you have so many strings to your bow don't you in terms yeah. of what you do I'll put a ton of stuff in the description section below. Um, but yeah let's let's get those guys set up and and they can give you a little jam out. And remember they're number 1 in Denmark today. Vinyl Number one on the vinyl charts in Denmark. <laughs> it's Mike. <laughs> We're so proud, man. It's it's uh, that was a good news. Like okay. Oh, cool. Well, look, and uh, we probably won't have this video edited up in time. I don't know actually. How many more dates are you doing in London, or is it just one today and then flying home again? We have a full-on UK tour for the next two weeks. Okay. Well, we will have this edited up then, and I, I'm looking at Pete now. We will have it edited up <laughs> in time for you maybe to catch the tail end of that tour if you want to. Um, but, uh, and of course, if you don't live in the UK and you live somewhere else in the world, check it out, because I'm guessing you're touring all over Europe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, We're going man. down to Germany and... Well, it's lovely for you to come in. Lee. Share a few tips about tone and stuff, man. Uh, good luck in the future with whatever you're doing. I'm sorry you didn't have the chance to play. I'm well, playing. I was playing earlier on, and uh, this was really just set up for my own, you know, person. But it's fine. It's okay. completely fine. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Thank Stay you. tuned for more killer players like Soren on Anderson's TV soon. Uh, that's it. I'll give it over to, to Mike and Soren. Bye. Bye. <laughs>